two exciting updates to the Autogen frameworks that can definitely increase the performance of any of your Autogen operations. The first one isn't live yet, but it's very exciting and has a lot of potential. And the other one, which will be the main topic for today, is already implemented and you can already start playing with it. Let's cover the first one because I think it it is very exciting and has a lot of potential. But as I said, it's not completely live yet. And this is the agent optimizer. By the way, I'm taking all of this from the Autogen blog. I love their blog. I just come here every other other day and see what has been updated. And yeah, I highly suggest that you just take a look at this blog every now and then or just keep on watching my videos. So regarding the agent optimizer, it's an agentic way to train your LLM. Basically, um, it's not live yet, so I'm, I, I won't bore you with too many facts, but the thing is, it's basically allows, it's a framework that builds an agent and the agent is able to optimize the functions that he is calling based on the results that the algorithm is creating. So basically, let's say you have a function for solving a math problem. And if you didn't arrive to the solution, the agent optimizer is taking the output of the last function and analyzes it, analyzes it. And based on this, it improves the function. So the next time you perform this function, you call this function, it's going to be more accurate. So this basically the agent optimizer will allow agents to constantly keep on improving and spit out more precise results and output. As I said, this isn't uh, completely live yet. It's only live in one example of the math agent. If you want, you can read more about it in the blog. And the other exciting update, which is already live, is agent descriptions. And this is basically a way that we can improve the performance of a group chat. So far, uh, the issue with the group chat was we had the, the system message. And the system message, if it was too long um, or maybe too confusing, the group chat would have gone kind of become a bit wacky and chaotic. And this is the difference that they have here and they have it and they explain it very well in the blog post. Maybe I will just stick to the blog post. So basically, um, this is an example. So the current group chat prompt has the following template. So you are in a role play game the following roles are available self participant and this is like the the system message of all the agents and this is read the following description and then select the next role from the list of agents so currently how would this look like without the new update of the description it would look like like this you are an, in a role play game the following roles are available assistant you are a helpful ai assistant solve task with your coding and language skills when you need to collect info etc solve the task step by step if you need to if a plan not provided explain etc and then reply terminate in the end when everything is done then user proxy which is the next uh, agent we don't give him um, a system message because it's us and then the guardrail agent the system message is you are a guardrail agent and are tasked with ensuring with all, etc. And then you must terminate the conversation if X, you must terminate the conversation if Y, etc. So as you can see in this description, it is very super, it is super confusing. You have like, you must terminate, there, there are a lot of guidelines. And when the group manager needs to decide who is, who is he going to message next or who is going to take the next step in, in the conversation, he needs to decide based on this, who is going to like delegate, not de delegate, but direct the conversation to. So it is hard to make out where each agent role description ends. This is the first thing you see, it's not very uh, straightforward. And um, you appears numerous times and refers to three separate agents, the group chat manager, the assistant agent, and the guard raid agent. And it also takes a lot of tokens because as you can see, it is very long. While with Autogen, um, the new version, group chat instead relies on the description field. So instead of having this long system message that moves all the, all 
during the whole conversation, we have this description. So you are in a role play game. The following uh, roles are available. Assistant, a helpful and general proposed AI assistant that has strong language skills, etc. The user proxy and the guardrails. An agent that ensures the conversation conforms to the responsible AI, etc. As you can see, all of this has been compressed into this. And these agents still have this description. They know what they are doing, but for the group chat manager, he doesn't need to know all of these like minute, uh, like minor guidelines that each agent has to know about his own behavior. So we have this description. So they say, this is much easier to parse and understand, and it doesn't use nearly as much tokens. Moreover, the following experiment provide early evidence that it works. So this is an experiment that they did, and I will show you in a moment, in a minute how you can implement this on your end. So basically, to illustrate, the Im the, to illustrate the impact of the description field, they set up a free agent experiment with uh, 26 problems. And they had free agents that were added to the group chat to solve the, pro pro the, like the coding problem. The free agents were coder, which is a, a default assistant prompt, the user proxy, which is configured to execute the code, and executive chef. And they added the executive chef as a distraction because the executive chef isn't relevant for solving these tasks. Now, the coder and the user proxy use the assistant agent and user proxy defaults, while the executive chef was given this, this system prompt, which is something like normal, you are an executive chef with 28 years of industry experience. You can answer questions about menu planning, meal prep, and cooking techniques. And this, as I say, the executive chef is clearly the distractor here. Um, he is irrelevant. Uh, all of the problems were not food re related and the group chat should rarely consult with the chef. However, when they configured ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo, they saw that the group chat was struggling with the orchestration, like the group chat manager. They used only the system message. They didn't use the description, which is the new thing. And the agents solve only three of 26 problems on the first turn. And the executive chef was called 24 times during the conversation, almost as much as the coder, which was called only 68 times. While when they added a description, and they didn't, they didn't use only like the old way of doing group chat using like the system messages. The agents solved seven out of 26, so it's more than twice as much. And the executive chef was called only 27 times, which is 50% of the amount that he was called doing the system messages. So versus 84 times for the coder which you can see is also a big increase. So using the description field doubled performance on this task and halves the, in the incidence of calling upon the distractor agent. Now they share a few interesting uh, tips regarding writing better descriptions and I'm going to share them with you. So first of all, you need to avoid first or second person perspective. This description such as you uh, or I, they are generic. So you should always use like the name of the agent and always have clear references. Imagine that you are the group chat manager and you are a lot, you are very confused regarding what's going on. So try to write the descriptions in a very descriptive manner and also the system messages make them very clear and easy for the group chat manager or the orchestrator to understand who knows what to do what and who he should defer the conversation to. Next tip is include any details that might help the orchestrator to know when to call upon the agent, basically what I said, and keep the description short, e.g., for example, a helpful AI assistant with strong natural language and Python coding skills. The main thing to remember is that the description is for the benefit of the group chat manager, not for the agent's own use or instruction, and I want to emphasize this. The description in opposing to the system message is irrelevant for the agent, for the operating agent. It's only a way to help the group chat manager to remember which agent can do what. So 
basically no need to cover the conclusion. Again, I invite you to check out the Autogen blog because it's amazing. Uh, they keep on sharing interesting insights. Uh, I often cover stuff from here. Um, but if you want to like learn more about Autogen, Autogen uh, check out the blog. Now, how you can implement this, it's uh, not complicated at all. Basically, um, I took a look in the GitHub repository and at the moment, whenever I want to build uh, agents, a conversation, I just go to this hugging face uh, playground and this allows me to basically build group chats. So you select the model, you add your API key, you add the base URL, and then you can choose or you can choose one of the templates. So let's say resource six, six agents and this already builds a, a template and obviously you can change these system messages and you can just define which type of agent um, you want to like is the engineer an assistant agent or a user proxy agent or whatever you can obviously change the names and change the system messages and then I hit the send button and it already generates the whole code for me. Then I copy and paste this code into my Visual Studio code and I can adjust it. Now, if we would like to add the description, what we have to do is, as you can see here, this is like the old version. They don't have the description or the description is optional. So they didn't choose to add the description, but we can take this um, assistant agent, for example, and you can see they have like the name, the system message, which is this. And let's say we want to add a description. All we have to do is we can use this link, the conversable agent uh, Python script uh, as a reference. And as you can see here, they write description, which is optional. And you just add, you just copy and paste this into the code. So you just come here and you copy and paste this and you can read more about this here. So they basically define or explain what is every argument. So you can see here the LLM, what they define, what is the, what are the alternatives for the LLM config? What are the alternatives for the code execution config? Um, reply. Now let's go to the description. Basically description, it's not, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Description, let's see if they have here Yes, so description is a short description of the agent of the agent. This description is used by other agents, e.g. the group chat manager to decide when to call upon this agent. Now, one thing, one more thing to note that if this is, this is optional and if you don't add the description, the group chat manager is going to use the system, the system message in order to understand which agent should he call. So, Adding the description isn't necessary, but as you saw, it uh, makes a lot of sense because it, it is going to improve your result. So this is another variable that we need to tweak from now on. If we want to have better results when running group agents, uh, group chats, we need also to add a description. So as I showed you, um, you just come here and you just add a description like this. So instead of having this, you just copy and paste over here. I haven't played with the description just yet. Um, I'm currently very immersed in trying to figure out crew AI, but I wanted to show you this because I think this is going to improve the performance of Autogen. Um, and now I'm going to switch back and test out uh, Autogen with this new description and see if we are going to get better results. We already saw in the in the blog post that still Autogen doesn't completely solve everything that we want, we wanted to solve, but this seems to be like a, a huge improvement, like doubling the amount of problems solved, which is very exciting. And as I said at the beginning, I'm looking forward to the introduction of the agent optimizer, which isn't live yet, but I think when the agent optimizer is going to be added, it is going definitely going to improve all the results and the outputs that we are seeing but let's uh, keep waiting and see when the autogen team is going to release this 
based on what I'm seeing, these guys are moving very fast. Uh, these are definitely exciting times. That's it for today, guys. If you have any questions, obviously leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video and haven't subscribed yet, please do. It uh, helps me a lot, gives me motivation. And also when using your subs, like analyzing the amount of subscribers per video, I know what you guys are interested in. And if it aligns with what I'm interesting, I'm interested in, I'm going to create videos based on this. Um, I guess that's it for today. And yeah, and then for the finisher, I guess until next time, keep on automating.